Well, good morning. Let's all stand together. Turn to your neighbor, someone behind you, and say good morning. Good 
Good morning, Bridge Church. Good morning. So great to be worshiping together today. Welcome. If we haven't met, my name is Blake. I'm the Youth Ministries Pastor here at Bridge Church. Just want to say good morning and thank you for being with us. Whether you're online or on site, we're happy that you have joined us today. And if, it, if you're new, if it's your first, second, or third time being with us, we would love to connect with you this morning. And how we do that are through these things called Connect Cards. And so you can grab one of these at the back of each door. If you're online today, there'll be a QR code that pops up that you can scan to take you directly uh, to one of these cards that you can fill out online. But however you choose to get this card today, we ask you fill it out and take it to our Start Here wall just through these doors in the lobby. And someone will be there to meet you, to hear your story, to tell you about who we are at Bridge Church, and then to hook you up with a free gift. So I encourage you to connect with us this Sunday. We have a few announcements before we continue on in the time of service. And the first one is we want to make you aware of a missions trip opportunity that's happening at the end of June. The dates are June 24th through 27th. And what this trip is, is, is a youth trip with our whole district. So it's a district-wide trip. And it's open to adults as well. But what we're doing is we're going to Minocqua to serve at Lac de Flambeau uh, Native American Reservation. And so we encourage students specifically to sign up for this trip. The cost is $500. It's going to be a great few days of doing a vacation Bible school and just ministering to the people on the reservation. So this is a awesome trip. The deadline is April 13th, so it's coming up really soon. And if you have any questions or you want more details, please come and find me. You can go to our church page as well to get registered for that trip. It's under the Go Teams missions, but it's going to be a great time. So we encourage you to be thinking and praying about that. Also, if you grabbed a Bridge Church grocery tote last week for the bumper blessings, those are going to be due back on the 14th, so next Sunday. And so make sure you go and you fill that bag up with the different items that our food pantry is needing. Bring that back, and the next week just set it behind your bumper. We'll come around, we'll collect them all, and then take them to the food pantry for you. This is one way that we're able to be the hands and feet of Jesus as we serve our community and uh, just help meet needs. Also, if you want to bring shoes for Souls for Jesus, we'll be collecting those as well. Well, you can set those behind the bumper. We will not take those to the food pantry. We'll make sure that those are separated for you and take them to Souls for Jesus. And then finally, so something super exciting, our next Pursue Night is going to be on May 1st, the very first day of the next month. And we are having baptisms as well on May 1st. So we're super excited about that. We invite you to be there to celebrate with all those who are making that decision to publicly declare that they love Jesus and that they're going to serve him. And if you're in this room today, or if you're online today, and that you you would say, you know, you have been saved, you trust that Jesus is Lord of your life, but you've never been water baptized, we would encourage you to do that on May 1st. To not hesitate, to not wait, but this would be a great time for you to make that decision, to make a public declaration of your dependence upon Christ. And so you can do that. You can sign up by going online or you can visit us at the info desk and we'll help you with that. But that's going to be happening May 1st at 630 during our Pursue Night. It's going to be a great time worshiping together and celebrating all those making that decision. We're going to move into a time of receiving tithe and offering this morning. And there's a few different ways that you can give here at Bridge Church that are going to be on the screen behind me. If you're online today, there'll be a QR code that pops up that you can scan to take you directly to our giving page. But as we choose to give today, we give with uh, joy and also obedience. That we don't do it begrudgingly or because we feel like we have to do it, but we do it because we trust in God and we understand what he's done for us. That's why we give today out of the joy in our hearts, trusting that God is good, that God is enough, that God is our provider, he's our caretaker, and that he's our Lord. And so let's pray together over the offering this morning. Jesus, we just say thank you that you are enough. Thank you, Lord, that you choose to use us in the different works. Thank you, Lord, that you choose to bless us. Lord, thank you for all the things that you do. Father, we cannot praise you enough. Lord, we pray over this offering we're about to receive that it goes to make your name known and to build your kingdom. God, we just want to give you the glory today. You alone are worthy. We love you and we praise you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you would stand this morning, we're going to go back into worship. And as we do, I invite our prayer team to come forward. Here at Bridge Church, we believe in the power of prayer. We've seen God do amazing and mighty things in people's lives when we call upon his name. And this morning is no different, that God is in this place. He's able to meet you here. And if you have a specific need or request, if something's going on in your life that you would like to receive prayer for, I want to encourage you to take a step of faith out of your seat. 
whether it feels uncomfortable or whether it feels weird, and just trust that God will meet you in this place when we step out in faith. And so there'll be prayer team members here at the front if you want to come and partner someone in prayer. And we're going to put a, a Hebrews 4, 16 up on the screen and just read this together today as a church, believing and proclaiming it's true over your life today. So let's read this. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it the most. Let's worship together today.
O oh Lord, our oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. And out of the mouths of babies and infants, you have established strength because of your foes. To still the enemy and the avenger. God, when I look at your heavens and the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you care for him. So Lord Jesus, we thank you for all that you've done. We thank you that you have created this space for us to come and gather and to worship. And so from the babies to the elementary schoolers to the students and adults that are gathered in this room, we lift up your name because you are simply worthy. 
And Lord, I pray that your name would be, would be proclaimed and worshiped all across our city and our county today. All of these churches that are meeting as we speak, I pray that you would bless them. I pray that you would be worshiped inside of the four walls of every church in this city. God, today we specifically pray for Fox River as they are in week two in their brand new building on the north side of Waukesha. Thank you uh, for teammates like Fox River. I pray that you would meet every need that they have, uh, that you would bless every person, that the gospel would be preached and your name would be worshiped. Lord, we love you. And as we move forward and we look at the Bible, your words to us, I pray that you would speak to us today in a fresh and a unique way. I pray that in Jesus' name, everybody said amen. 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 Hey, can we show some appreciation to the worship team this morning? Yes. You can go ahead and grab a seat. Uh, As I prayed, I I lifted up Fox River on the north side of Waukesha in their new location. If you're new to Bridge Church, that's something we do once a month where we pick one of, uh, another one of the churches in our city and we choose our language very intentionally because these other churches are not our competition. They are our teammates in making the name of Jesus famous. Amen? Amen. Well, good morning. If we haven't had a chance to meet, my name is Tyler Wolf, and I am not at this campus very much because I am the pastor of our Oconomowoc campus. And so with that, I want to say good morning to those who are worshiping in Oconomowoc. Oconomowoc campus, I love you, I miss you, and I can't wait to be back there next week. And I also want to welcome our online campus, which is for those who choose to worship from home or maybe they cannot get out. We're so glad that you are with us here this morning. And so we're going to get into a brand new sermon series called Ships. And what we're going to do over the next several weeks is answer different questions as to why we do the different things that we do here at Bridge Church. One week we're going to tackle the topic of stewardship, asking the question, why do we give our finances to the church? Why do we receive an offering every week? Where does the money go? And most importantly, what does the Bible say about financial stewardship? Another week we're going to tackle the topic of partnership, where we are going to ask the question, why do we give finances to organizations outside of the church? Why are we paying the salaries and buying cars for missionaries that don't call Bridge Church home? We're going to answer that question. We're going to have a guest speaker that day from a place called Convoy of Hope. I'm telling you right now, you're not going to want to miss that week. And then we're going to wrap up this sermon series on this topic of fellowship, specifically communion, asking the question, Why do we celebrate communion once a month? What do we believe about communion? And how does Bridge Church maybe differ from the church or the parish that you grew up going to? What is the deal with communion? Who gets to receive it? We're going to ask all of those questions and hopefully provide scripturally sound answers. Well, today we're going to tackle this ship, worship. Now, here's what we need for you. We need to for you to pray for our pastors. We need you to pray for each person who's going to preach through this sermon series because the probability of someone accidentally swearing from this stage (laughs) over the next month has skyrocketed, has skyrocketed, okay? So it's not going to be me, okay? I'm on high alert. It's not going to be me. I am not going viral. There's cameras on. I'm not going to swear today, okay? (laughs) Just pray that no one does. (laughs) The truth is, is all these different practices, worship, stewardship, partnership, fellowship, and all of the ships that we practice in church are all anchored to the ultimate ship of relationship. These are all meant to serve our relationship with God. And knowing why we do these things will always add meaning to what we do. Knowing why adds meaning to what. And they're all anchored to relationship. Now, when I talk about worship, we just want to acknowledge that every one of us is born with worship in our hearts. We are born with an instinct to honor things that we think are great and to pay honor and worship to people that we think are greater than ourselves. Everything we do is in a way worship in and of itself. And so worship is not just singing, but this week, when we talk about worship, what is it that we are most oftentimes referring to? Well, 
It's what we just did for the last 20 minutes, and it's singing. And so that is the question that I hope to answer this morning. Why do we sing in church? Have you ever thought about that? Some of you love it. Some of you, it's your least favorite part of church. Why do we spend 20 minutes of our precious time every single week singing? I hope to answer that this morning. Here's our text for today's sermon. Psalm 92 says this. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp and the melody of the lyre, for you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands, I sing for joy. So scripture says it's good for us to sing songs to God. But it's not exclusive to church. Have you ever thought about that? People sing at worship gatherings all the time. There's a new worship gathering that's been springing up actually all over the country. And it's, you're not going to believe how many people show up to this worship service. Tens of thousands of people arrive and they worship for over three hours long. There's not even a sermon. It's all music. Have you heard about this worship service? It's called the Eras Tour. It's Taylor Swift. <laughs> Okay? And if you think that that's not worship, go and watch it. It's worship. There's another worship service that many of you have actually been to. It happens about once a week in our state and people gather. And then at some point during the worship service, uh, they sing this song. Here's the lyrics. It says, in a garden, what a garden. Only happy faces bloom there. And there's never any gloom there. There's never any room there for worry or gloom there. Then they hear a rumble on the floor. It's the big surprise that they're waiting for, and all the couples form a ring. For miles around, you'll hear them sing. Roll out the barrel. Roll out the barrel. People sing that at the weekly worship service at Lambeau, and they sing it at family whatever field it is. What's it? Miller Park. <laughs> right? Singing has always been a way of finding the worship in our heart and directing it in one direction or another. And the truth is, is I'm not coming against Taylor Swift. I'm not coming against Packers or the Brewers. I'd like to leave here alive, okay? <laughs> right? But I'm just pointing out is that we do want to honor the things that we love. And oftentimes, singing is a way for us to do that. And scripture, time and time again, says some form of it's good for us to sing. And so I want to answer that question. Why does scripture tell us that it's good for us to sing songs to God? Here's four things that singing does for us. Here's four things that happen when we sing in church. Number one, it calls us out of our comfort. Number two, it combines us into community. Number three, it communicates our emotions. And finally, it carries us to the cross of Jesus Christ. Let's get into it. So first thing that singing does when we show up to church and the band starts to play and we start to sing is it calls us out of our comfort zone. Now, I'll be brief on this point because I don't believe that this is actually universally true for every person. Many of you are most comfortable while singing, okay? But for many people, it's actually kind of an awkward time. You may be, it's your least favorite part of church to be singing songs. Because singing is vulnerable. Many of you don't want to talk up here in the first place, but then if I were to say, come up here and sing, it would, it would make me very nervous for me to get up here and sing. You know what I'm saying? It's a vulnerable thing to lift your voice in song. I remember back when I was a kid was when that show American Idol first came out. And when that show first started, people across the country, in my house for sure, me and my sisters, we would gather around the TV in the beginning of the season to watch the auditions. And we loved it when a good singer would sing, but we really loved it <laughs> when there was a bad singer. Because <laughs> we got to kind of sit there and watch Simon Cowell be really mean. And I mean, nobody here, some people love to watch that, okay? Not me. I'm just kidding. I absolutely loved it. It was awesome. But no matter how bad the person was, ultimately there was kind of a respect for anyone willing to go on national TV and sing. Why? Because singing is vulnerable. Here's my point. 
When we are willing to come into church and physically sing, whether we want to or not, whether we're a music person or not, whether I'm a person of the word, not music, whatever, no matter what your personality is or preferences are, when we are willing to come into church and lift our voice and sing, it's a physical way to make the statement, I'm willing to be uncomfortable today. I would say that there is a greater reluctance to be uncomfortable now more than ever. And when we come into church, if we absolutely refuse any discomfort, we are not going to be transformed and changed in the way that God has intended for us to change. And so when I come in, whether I want to or not, I'm going to lift a song of praise to God. It makes the statement, today I'm open to be uncomfortable. Today, if the word says so, I'm open to being convicted about my sin. I'm open to getting to the altar and hitting my knees and praying about what God wants to do in my life. When I sing and I'm willing to be uncomfortable in that way, it says I'm open to connecting with others, which is not always the easiest thing. I'm open to confessing my sin. Singing calls us out of our comfort. The second thing that singing in church does is it combines us in with community. And what I mean is the sound of other people's voices. We heard it just a few minutes ago. At both of our physical campuses, we sang together. And the sound of the other people's voices around us reminds us, I am a part of a community. I remember several years ago, uh, I got a call from the owner of my jiu-jitsu gym. His name is Dan LaPaz. He tragically passed away this last summer, uh, and we miss him every day. But I remember he called me, and uh, he, had a, he had kind of a monotone and a deep voice, and he said, Tyler, how much do you weigh? And I was like, Dan, you're not supposed to ask that. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. When a fight coach asks you how much you weigh, what they're trying to say is there's someone else who I think has your same weight that wants to fight you. And so I was very nervous. I was just like, why? And he goes, well, you have an opponent. Are you available on Saturday? He called me on a Tuesday. I was like, well, let me call my wife. I called my wife. I said, there's another guy. My weight, he wants to fight. What should I do? She goes, and I was hoping she'd be like, we have plans. And I'd be like, oh, I can't, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> I called him back. I said, I'm available. And so I was taking my first cage fight. Now, just to let you know how all that works, this is cage fighting for, like, pastors who have to go to work on Sunday, okay? <laughs> so there's no punching to the face or to the head. It's knees, kicks, and elbows to the body and legs. So does it hurt? Yes, but am I going to get brain damage? No, okay? So it was a pastor, and I, I can't make this up, a pastor versus an accountant, okay? <laughs> Literally, just a couple dorks pretending to be Conor McGregor on the weekend. <clears throat> Lead this to say, this was my first fight in the cage, and I was very nervous, three days' notice. And I got in, I trained as much as I could that week, I started eating right to make sure that I was on the right weight, and then I showed up to the fight on that Saturday, three days notice, and I was so nervous. I mean, I was like shaking, okay? And I went up to my coach, Dan, and I said, listen, I am terrified to get inside of this cage. Are you guys going to lock the door? Because I think I want to run, okay? And he looked at me and he just said, Tyler, when you get in there, it's going to be loud, it's going to be scary. All you need to do is listen to my voice. Just do exactly what I tell you to do. And that first fight, I ended up losing to a decision. And it was Dan's voice that got into the cage and encouraged me. He said, you'll get him next time. I asked my opponent for a rematch. And when I won the rematch, it was Dan's voice that congratulated me. And he said, you just need to listen to my voice. Listen to the voice in your corner. Here's why I share that story. The sound of your neighbor's voice, voice is maybe more important than you realize. Because out there in the world, faith will often feel like a fight. A fight to do the right thing. A fight to be a man or a woman of integrity. A fight to stay in line with God's word. And when we come into this place, we need the sound of our neighbors to remind us we are not alone. The sound of his voice was my reminder of what to do, and the sound of the congregation's voice is our reminder that there's other people in this place that are like me. They may not look like me, 
They may have more or less money than me. They may not have the same criminal background as me, but they serve the same God as me. Ephesians 5.19 says that we address one another with our songs. So not only are we singing to God, but it serves our neighbor when we sing together. And it reminds us there's other people that believe what I believe. And there's other people that might struggle with what I struggle with. It combines us in with this community. Third thing that singing does is it helps us communicate our emotions. Have you ever had to fill out like a birthday card or some anniversary card or something and you didn't know what to write? Have you ever been there? I find myself in that spot all the time. And so if you're like me, I just want to give you a pro tip, a life hack, okay? What you do is you go into the Hallmark store or wherever and you pick out the card that you want to buy. And that's going to have a little message written in there. How many know you can't just leave that message? you got to write something. So grab another card that you don't plan to buy and write that pre-written message inside of the one you're going to buy. Okay? People are going to be like, what, did Bill Shakespeare just buy me a birthday card? Wow. You know what I mean? They're going to think you're a poet. Okay? <clears throat> I'm just kidding. But... <laughs> Communicating our emotions can be very difficult for some. Look at the text. It is good to sing songs to God. And when we jump down to verse 4, it's good to sing, for you have made me glad. It is good to sing, and so I sing for joy. It's in the text. Because if somebody were to ask you, and again, this isn't, I mean, there's so many different types of people at a church that has a campus in Oconomowoc and those worshiping at home and three services in Waukesha. There's so many different types of people, but for many, if you were asked how you feel about God, some people would have a hard time really articulating their feelings. And that's one of the big values of singing every single week is whether you can put it into words or not, we can join together as one verse because songs are a vehicle for our affections to travel in. It's a way for us to attach language to this love that we have for the God who has done so much in our lives. Look at the text. Most high. He loves us. He's faithful to us. That is a God who is worth singing to. Let's review. Singing in church calls us out of our comfort, combines us in community. It communicates our emotions. And finally, Singing in church is meant to carry us to the cross of Jesus Christ. See, these songs that we sing, it's not Christian karaoke once a week. <laughs> these songs are meant to prepare us to receive this. It's meant to work on our hearts and prepare us for the moment that the all powerful message of Jesus will be preached to our hearts. And it's the gospel that is core to who we are as a church. Our vision at Bridge Church is to connect people with others. And who? God. Our mission, we want to see people know God, find freedom, connect with others, and make a difference. One of our five core values is to be gospel-centered, meaning everything we do, singing included, points us to Jesus. This means we don't gather here on a Sunday morning to hear good advice. We gather here to be captured by the good news. And there's a big difference. Gathering on a Sunday morning isn't about finding four steps to a better life or a better marriage or to better kids, right? It's about a God. It's about being captured and falling in love with a God who relentlessly pursues us. This is about gathering to be captured by a God who did for us on the cross what we could never do for ourselves. This is about the gospel. And songs prepare us to, be, to receive the gospel, to say yes to the gospel, and to be captured by the gospel. So for the first 15, 20 minutes of our gatherings at either one of our physical campuses or if you're worshiping online, this is moving us towards that because worship is anchored to relationship with God. So what's happening when we sing? What's happening? Psalm 22.3 says that God inhabits the praises of his people. Think about that. God makes a home inside of the sound of our praise. 
And so it's not just us singing to God, it's also God ministering to us through our singing, being among us. And when we are among the presence of God, what does scripture say? There's freedom. There's freedom. God ministers to us through our singing. So not only does things happen to us in this community, and of course God is honored, but there's one more thing that happens in worship that I think is very important. Maybe you've been a babysitter, an aunt, or an uncle, a grandparent, and especially parents. Have you ever sent a kid to their room as like a punishment, and then you hear them having fun? (laughs) Does that drive you nuts? Okay, that drives me absolutely crazy. I'm like, you're supposed to be miserable up there, okay? (laughs) Don't you know I sent you to that room full of toys to be miserable? (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) I think that there's something to that when we worship, and here's what I mean. You have an enemy of your soul. Jesus came to give life and life abundantly, and the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy that life. And when we show up, to church, despite the enemy's efforts to tear your marriage apart, to get into your kids' lives, to get you back on the needle, back on the bottle, to mess up your internet history, to do whatever it is that the enemy does to mess with your faith in Christ, when we show up and we sing, we sing to God, but we also sing to God in the face of evil. In the 1800s, African slaves would lift their voice while they were enslaved. They would lift these songs up to God in the face of the evil of slavery. Frederick Douglass says this. He said that the slave songs that they would sing were a testimony against slavery and a prayer to God for the deliverance from chains. When we sing, we sing to God, but we also sing in the face of evil. During the Spanish Civil War, a group of nuns were put to death because of their faith in Christ by communist forces. And it said in a newspaper article several years later, it says that their eyes were not distorted with fear. Instead, they went to their death singing hymns in the face of evil. Singing has always been us praising God, God ministering to us as well but also us choosing to praise in the face of evil and in the face of injustice. And no matter what the trial is that I face out there, I am going to praise God in here. It doesn't make my problems go away, but I'm going to praise God anyways. When I come in here and sing, even though I've wrestled with addiction out there, I'm going to sing in here. Even though I've struggled out there, I'm going to sing in here because it's not the work of the enemy that defines who God is. It's who God is that defines who God is, and he is always worthy. Amen? Amen? Singing is a way for us to look evil in the eye and say, I'm loved by God, and I love him. Worship is anchored to relationship with God. And so here's what I want us to do. I intentionally left time here for us to lift our voices in worship. Because Psalm 147 says something really interesting. It says, it is good to sing praises to our God. For it is pleasant, listen to this, a song of praise is fitting. And so whether we are music people or not, whether the songs are our most favorite or least favorite part of church or not, whether we are a music person or not, it says that songs are fitting for God. Why that is? You know, I'm not sure why God made that his system, but I know that he says, just lift up a song to me. You may not have it all figured out, but lift up a song to me. A song of praise is fitting. And so I'm going to invite you to stand, if you would. And I want to read a good portion of Psalm chapter 147 to kind of lead us into a moment of singing 
where I encourage you to lift your voice to the God who loves you, to the God who stops at nothing to have you. And here's what it says. For it is good to sing praises to our God. It is pleasant and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. Thank you, Jesus. He heals the brokenhearted. Thank you, Jesus. He binds up their wounds. Thank you, Jesus. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the humble. He casts out the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. He may make melody to our God. He covers the heavens with clouds. He prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass grow on the hills. He gives the beasts their food and to the young ravens that cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse nor his pleasure in the legs of a man, but the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him and those who hope in his steadfast love. And so this morning, as we sing one last time, you can rest assured that God is enjoying himself in this moment because he loves the sound of the praise of his people. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're gonna lift our voice to you because you are worthy. I pray that in our hearts this morning, we would be reminded that we're not alone, that there's other people that you've surrounded us with, I pray that we would be willing to be uncomfortable. Lord, I pray that you would hear our affections, how we feel about you. And Lord, I pray most of all that you would capture our hearts with the message of the cross. Jesus, we love you. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Let's worship.
So Jesus, that's um, our hope, is that we can pour out our affections at the feet of your one and only son, Jesus, because of who he is and what he's done. Lord, receive our praise each and every week. Uh, we love you and you're worthy. I pray that in Jesus' name, amen. amen. If I can, I just want to bless you with our verse of the year, Colossians 2, 6, and 7. Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Pastor Todd will be back in the saddle next week, so make sure you welcome him back, and you guys have a great rest of your weekend. God bless you.